Hello ladies, I'm Dr. Alexis Anderson with Body Be Good. I am extremely excited and honored to be part of the Pleasure Plus program. Today, I will be talking with you about your pelvic floor anatomy, your sexual anatomy, and how the two are related. Let's get started. Here is your pelvis. Well, not yours, but a model of a pelvis. Here we can see the bony pelvis. This is the top of it. This is as if I were to put my hand on my waist, my hand would fall right on top of these two pelvic bones here, the iliac crests. If we come down the iliac crests, we're able to see the pubic bone right in the front center of our pelvis. Following down from the pubic bone, we have the pubic rami on the left and right sides. Those pubic rami go down into our sits bones. Our sits bones are these two really big, thick bones that we sit on. If you were to slide your hand underneath your tush, you would feel these two big bones. If we look at the back of the pelvis, we can see this is the last lumbar vertebrae of our lumbar or low spine. We have our sacrum here and we have our coccyx or tailbone here. As we can see here, the pelvic floor connects to the pubic bone at the top. It connects all the way down to the, to the coccyx, to the, to the tailbone, and in between the two sits bones. This whole area from front to back to left and right is your pelvic floor. We can see how it sits almost like a sling from front to back of the pelvis. If we look down into the pelvis, we can see how your pelvic floor muscles create the bowl down inside of your pelvis. The pelvic floor is comprised of three different layers of pelvic floor muscles. Also, it has arteries and nerves and veins and lymphatics, but we're gonna concentrate more on the muscular anatomy and of the sexual anatomy. Here, we can see the vulva. My pelvic floor does not have outer labia. She has inner labia here. You can see the hood of the clitoris there, the header glands of the clitoris. We have the urethra, which is the tube that we urinate from, and the vaginal opening here. The first two layers of the pelvic floor live in this triangular space and include the external anal sphincter. What's not shown on this model, so we also have muscles that wrap around the urethra, that wrap around the vagina. If I were to remove the first two layers of your pelvic floor muscles, now you've got the third layer of your pelvic floor muscles. They're much bigger, bigger and larger, and these help to support the bladder in the front, the uterus if you still have one, and the rectum that would be in the back. Let's take a look at our sexual anatomy. Now, part of our sexual anatomy is the labia minor, which you see here, or the inner lips of the vulva, the clitoral hood, and the head or glands of the clitoris. Now, sitting under this ischiocavernosus muscle here, which is our pelvic floor muscle, and sitting right underneath the pubic ramus and connecting to it is our clitoris. So our clitoris would sit underneath this tissue in this way. We would have a clitoral head, we'd have a clitoral hood, which is not shown. Coming down the sides and underneath your pelvic floor muscles would be the corpus cavernosus, which is, oh, you have one here and one here, which are these leg-like structures here. Also coming around the urethra and coming around the vagina are the vestibules, the bulbs of the clitoris. These structures in red engorge with blood and fill up during arousal and during climax. So now that you know about your sexual anatomy and your pelvic floor anatomy, how do the two work together? Well, for starters, these two muscles here, 
your ischiocavernosis and your bobocavernosis muscle help to engorge and increase blood flow into the clitoris itself. Also, our pelvic floor muscles, they contract during arousal and that contraction intensifies during climax. If we have weak or very thin pelvic floor muscles, it may be difficult to engorge the clitoris and you may have decreased vaginal sensitivity. On the flip side, if your pelvic floor muscles are too tight and they're not flexible enough, then that may cause difficulty accepting penetration. It may cause pain when you try to have intercourse and it may cause difficulty when trying to allow blood flow into the clitoris itself. Now, this is just a sneak peek of my episode and my part of Pleasure Plus, and there's so much more that we'll be talking about in the program, but I just wanted to give you a little bit of insight into your pelvic floor muscles and the effect that they have on your sexual anatomy. I hope you enjoyed the first day of my four day mini course, Learn, Pelvic Floor Anatomy and Sexual Anatomy. Stay tuned for day two of the mini course called Feel. You will be taught how to feel your pelvic floor muscles contract, relax, and elongate. Stay tuned.